Hello and welcome back to this film review channel, hanging the delicate chinaware of critical insights on the novelty mug tree of cultural discourse. This weekend it's the Oscars and you might want to log on to the Guardian website and check out my predictions in the grid form pioneered by our newspaper, saying what will win, what should win and what should have been a contender. For Best Picture and Best Director, I do have to say it's now very, very likely to be everything, everywhere, all at once. The wacky but basically insufferable multiverse absurdist comedy with Michelle Yeoh assaulted by alternative reality options in her life. Everyone gushes about this hipster movie choice. I myself am agnostic, although the cast is great. My should-win vote goes to Tar, the amazing and over-the-top psychodrama with Kate Blanchett as the autocratic orchestra conductor heading for a nervous breakdown. For Best Actor, I think we're going to be stuck with Austin Butler's perfectly competent impersonation of Elvis in Baz Luhrmann's sparkly greatest hits biopic. I, incidentally, am in a minority of one in quite liking Tom Hanks' performance as Colonel Tom Parker, but I would prefer to see an Oscar for Bill Nye's lovely performance in Oliver Hermanus's heart-wrenching Kurosawa remake, Living. But now I've got to go slightly off message and very, very late to the party. Talk about a streaming TV miniseries that in fact launched on Paramount Plus last year. And it's The Offer, the secret history of the making of The Godfather. The Godfather is putting in us too many problems. You want me to take care of it? Gangster movies are dead. This is not just some gangster film. We need someone who understands the times. For instance, Ford Coppola, he's got a great vision. We have to put this in the picture. A scene about gangsters arguing over sauce? No. A scene about family arguing over sauce. The drama is created by the screenwriter and novelist Michael Tolkien, but importantly based on the memories of The Godfather's producer, Albert S. Ruddy, who picked up the Best Picture Oscar for The Godfather, and then again much later, for Million Dollar Baby. This remarkable man is still with us at the age of 92, and he has an executive producer credit on the offer. Miles Teller does his cowboy actor turn as the coolly capable can-do guy Albert Ruddy who follows his dream, and indeed his instincts, to get the movie made. Matthew Good is the madly florid and campy studio head Robert Evans. Dan Fogler plays Francis Ford Coppola as much more cuddly than the real thing. Juno Temple is Al's assistant Betty McCart. Bern Gornham is Gulf and Western's cantankerous Austrian corporate chief Charlie Blue Dawn. Giovanni Ribisi is mob boss Joe Colombo, whose permission was needed to make the film. Anthony Ippolito is brilliant as the young Al Pacino. And Justin Chambers is pretty good as Brando himself. Now, the offer is a little bit hokey sometimes, with people saying things like, we really need this hot young kid Al Pacino to play Michael Corleone. But I have to say, it is rather watchable. But there is one very strange thing. In the trailer for this, you can see the image of a terrified old man crying. This is supposed to be the owner of the Staten Island house, which was used as the location for the famous wedding scene that starts the film. This house has, in fact, in the real world, become mildly famous on its own account. You can rent it on Airbnb. Although people who do that may be disappointed not to see the famous interior, the Don's shadowy study, which was, in fact, fabricated in the studio. Now, those of us who thought we were long past the debate about whether or not The Godfather glamorises or normalises mob violence may be, as I was, disconcerted to see the issue inadvertently raised again by this, because the offer flat out claims that the owner of this house did not want to let Coppola use it, but was kidnapped and threatened by Joe Colombo until he changed his mind. Ruddy is shown to be mildly shocked by this, but he does not protest and cheerfully accepts the fact that Colombo has got him the house that they wanted. Can it really be true that the producers of The Godfather were complicit with a real threat of violence, indeed an act of violence, which goes way beyond any theoretical op-ed opinions about whether or not the movie glorifies the mob. Well, I googled it, and in fact, this scene does appear to be fictional. The house's owner was not threatened directly, but maybe indirect pressure was brought to bear. Yet even the fact of this drama making it up and implying that it was true so casually is surely a staggering attitude. There's actually another scene showing the owner of the restaurant used in the famous Michael Corleone shooting scene being roughed up with Ruddy's approval. Now, no self-respecting sophisticate in this business admits to being shocked, of course, but I admit I was a little bit startled by this, and I wonder if everyone involved quite realised what they're admitting to. 
Well, there it is. The offer is still a good pre-Oscar weekend watch. Please subscribe to this channel and leave a wholeheartedly supportive comment about my work once you have done so. And please, please, oh please, buy my book, The Films That Made Me, an edited selection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian. See you next week.